Imagine a life in which you are completely trapped in your own body. No ability to move, no ability to eat, no ability to speak, but you're completely aware of your environment and everything going on. That condition is called locked-in syndrome. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 23-year-old woman who came to the emergency department after being found down at her apartment by her roommates. The last time she was seen or heard was about 36 hours ago by her mom who spoke to her on her phone, and she said that she had a headache. She was unable to speak and she was unable to move, but she did seem to be blinking her eyes. Her tongue was protruding and she was not able to protect her airway, so she was intubated and this CT angiogram was performed. A CT angiogram is a test that we do as a stroke alert and we inject IV dye to evaluate the blood vessels of the brain. And we see here that there is a flow defect right here in the mid basilar artery. That means there is an obstruction of blood flow to the brainstem. The initial CT that was done of the brain shows a hyperdense basilar artery sign, which you can see right here and right here. This is not always seen, but it's classic of a basilar artery thrombosis. Essentially what I am saying is she has a clot that's obstructing the flow of fluid to her brainstem and she is suffering an active stroke. Here is the MRI of her brain that shows a large stroke of her pons, the DWI sequence of the brain, which is a sequence we utilize to help evaluate for stroke, shows the same finding. Her pons is not getting blood. The key part of what I said is that we had last seen her normal about 36 hours ago, so she is not a candidate for TPA or a clot-busting medication or even an interventional procedure where we can go and retrieve the clot. A thrombectomy is a procedure where we can go in endovascularly and retrieve the clot, but typically has to be done within 24 hours of symptom onset. Here you can see a cartoon depiction of all the blood vessels of the brain, and the basilar artery comes from the, where the two vertebral arteries right here come together and intersect right here to form the basilar artery. You can see the small penetrating blood vessels that supply the pons. Right here is the circle of Willis. What you talking about, Willis? It's the intersection of all the major blood vessels that supply the brain, including both carotids and both vertebral arteries, to help provide blood flow to the brain. Because the circle of Willis provides collaborative flow, other parts of the brain typically aren't affected by a basilar artery thrombosis. A patient that suffers injury to the anterior part of the pons can develop what's called locked-in syndrome. Damage to this part of the brain will cause complete quadriparesis, where you cannot move your arms or legs. That even affects the muscles of facial expression and your ability to swallow. You can look up and you can look down, but you cannot look from side to side. Not only that, but you can't feel your body either. But your cognition or your ability to think is completely intact. So you can think and process your outside world, but you cannot speak, get your words out, or move. That's why we call it locked-in syndrome, because you're locked into your own body. You're completely dependent on someone else's care, including a feeding tube to help feed you and people to help turn you and move you. Most always at the beginning stages of locked-in syndrome, you will also need a breathing tube and a ventilator to help control your breathing. Despite all of this, patients can actually go on to survive and live meaningful lives. Why could she move her eyes up and down, but not side to side? That's because a stroke to that part of the brainstem will affect cranial nerves four all the way to 12. Cranial nerves four and six are the nerves that allow us to look side to side. Because all those other cranial nerves are damaged, she can't even move her facial muscles or speak or swallow. Causes of locked-in syndrome include stroke, like in our patient, infection, tumors of the brainstem, demyelination, which includes causes like multiple sclerosis, and even conditions like ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Traumatic brain injury and anoxic brain injury can also cause this. Typically diagnosed by MRI and cerebral angiography, and you can confirm that the patient is actually alert and awake by performing an EEG. It's a test where we can examine the waveforms in the brain. Unfortunately, there's not typically a cure for locked-in syndrome. You may ask, why did a 23-year-old girl have a stroke? Unbeknownst to her, she had a clotting factor disorder called antiphospholipid syndrome. Basically, her blood was more prone to clotting. She was taking a birth control, and that, in the combination with her antiphospholipid syndrome, significantly increased her risk of having a blood clot. Fortunately, that blood clot went to her brain.
went through an extremely long recovery, including care at a long-term care facility, but eventually went home. These patients require a lot of care and compassion. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend reading The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, which was written by a patient with locked-in syndrome. This will give you a completely different perspective of patient care. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.